If you're a fan of the factory pattern in C Sharp and Java, you'll be pleased to find that it works well in C++. But the question of lifetime management is a bit trickier. If you're working with a third-party library, you'll need to know how the factory methods expect lifetime management to be handled. Will they clean up after themselves, or will you? There are three methods of approach. You receive a pointer to an object and delete it when you're done. The factory exports a method you can call to return the instance for cleanup, and the factory returns an auto pointer based instance that cleans itself when it goes out of scope. Let's look at an example of how an application gets into trouble. Here are some small representative classes for a hotel check in application. A reservation contains guests and rooms and can return pointers to guest instances and room instances. The reservation class manages those lifetimes so that users of the class won't have to. There's a function call, perhaps part of a factory class, that returns a reservation when supplied with a reservation ID, but the factory doesn't manage the lifetime of the reservation instance. That means accessing a room or guest has different semantics than accessing a reservation. And maintenance coders will tend to assume if they don't have to manage the lifetime of the room and guest instances, they don't have to manage the lifetime of the reservation itself. In the first case, there's nothing to keep you from using auto pointer against the returned pointer to ensure deletion. There's another tack you can take when dealing with legacy code or library code with dubious lifetime management. One rather long lived library I use has a text buffer class that accumulates large buffers quite nicely, but has the unfortunate habit of handing back a malloc pointer when asked to provide an ASCII Z string copy of that buffer. This was reasonable back in the days when our code was more C-like, but today anyone receiving a string buffer expects to be able to use delete, not free. Write a wrapper class that accepts a pointer to the class with the unfortunate memory management and capture what it returns in that class. When the code invokes your wrapper's destructor, clean up the pointer to the captured data in the manner appropriate to the class. Don't forget that there are two kinds of delete in C++ object delete and array delete. A compiler may not flag an inappropriate use of delete when array delete is more correct, but if the array happens to contain objects, their destructors won't be called with object delete, and that can lead to memory leaks. This wraps up our look at many ways that memory leaks can occur and how to avoid them as much as humanly possible. Remember to augment these ideas with regular code reviews, especially when you receive updates from coders unfamiliar with your code base and to make sure to document the memory management requirements of your classes and functions in an easy to understand way. You want to make working with your code as easy for newcomers as it is for veteran coders.